them back. So I've managed to put in all of these transient markers, but what I need to do is I need to tidy them up and get them as close to the downbeat as we possibly can by ear. Now we aren't robots, so we can't get it exactly right, but we can do our best. So the way that we can do that is just by grabbing hold of any of these transients and we can wiggle them from left to right. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a quick example of that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So that one's a bit out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That one was a bit out too. One, two, three, four, one, two. That was a bit early as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. He was a bit late, there we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Okay, so that's close enough, I think. So let me close that audio editor down. What we get when we go back into our main window is we get these transient markers on our beat mapping area. So what we're gonna do, let's zoom in again actually, is we're actually gonna line up these bars to each transient marker that we've inputted, all right? So it's really important that you're um, connecting the first beat of the bar, which is this tiny line behind each of the numbers that you can see on the timeline here. Okay, so not this timeline, okay, not this guy, this guy, all right? So what we wanna do, we wanna make sure that, that that line before the number is highlighted, you click down and then drag towards that, temp, that transient. And when you let go, it will calculate a tempo for you. And then you just keep going. Now it's worth mentioning at this stage that be as accurate and detailed as you possibly can here because if you mess say for example I messed that one up when I corrected it it will have it will change all of these okay so as you go along just check that it's correct because otherwise you're gonna have to be going back and redoing everything over again which isn't fun okay so once we do that bear with me guys we'll just quickly rush through this obviously paying attention but being as quick as I can okay now maybe that the whole um, point of this really is to make sure that that sync point at the end of the queue where the dinosaurs feet touch the ground are being met um, with the climax of the music okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my um, MIDI and check that that fits. So I'm gonna mute this guy, get rid of him, don't need him. I'm gonna go file, uh, import, there we go, um, MIDI file, and where is it? Downloads, there we go, import. And no, I do not want to import the tempo, so big fat note. Great, and it's gonna chuck it at the end. I don't know why it does that. I think it's just because it's recognized that this is all kind of weird timings. So do that and grab all of this stuff. Now, what I've realized is that if you move them all at once, watch what happens. Oh no, it doesn't happen. In some cases, when you move this across, it kind of erases your tempo map. So sometimes you have to do it one by one. But in this case, it seems to be working for some unknown reason. So let's just whack him in there. So if I press play, I'm gonna get a horrible version of um, the Jurassic Park queue. So let's just check that it syncs to that, that um, uh, well, climax. Nice. 
face. Excellent stuff. Okay, so basically, guys, that is it. That is um, how we create a tempo map. Okay. Um, now we're going to be going on to orchestration techniques from there. So I'm going to be going over velocity, I'm going to be going over expression tools, and then we're going to be going into um, orchestration tools as well that will um, make your stuff sound really, really rich and nice. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to stop there and we'll catch up next week. All right. Cheers. <laughs>